Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to figure out the number of bits in a binary number that you need when converting from base 10 to binary. So how many bits do you need? For example, and this is problem five, which can be found in your free online applied discrete math textbook, and I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that out. So 2017, if we were to convert this to binary, how many bits do we need? And how do you know that? Well, to answer this question, let's start with one bit. How high of a number can we get with just one bit? Well, two to the power of zero is one. So, and that's in base 10, this is in base two, and this is in base 10. So with one bit, we can go as high as the value one. What about two bits? What's the largest binary number that we can create with two bits? Well, that would be if we had both entries as one, which in base 10 is two to the power of one plus two to the power of zero, which is three. What about three bits? Well, that would be if we use one in all the placeholders here. And so that's two squared plus two to the one power plus two to the zeroth power which is seven. What about four bits? How high can we go with four bits? Well, that would be if we have ones in all of our placeholders again, which is two cubed plus two squared plus two to the power of one plus two to the power of zero, which is 15. Now I do wanna mention that one is two minus one, three is two squared minus one, seven is two cubed minus one, 15 is two to the fourth minus one. And I'll put a one here so you can see that there's a pattern going on. And this is not coincidental. Let's try one more. What if we had five bits? Well, the largest binary number that we can construct with five bits is if we use ones in all the placeholders here. So this is two to the fourth, all the way down to two to the zeroth power, which is the same answer as the last one, two to the fourth minus one, but we have this extra term here, two to the fourth power, which is really two to the fifth power minus one. Two to the fourth power plus two to the fourth power is two to the fourth powers, which is two to the fifth power. And so with five bits, we can get two to the fifth, we can get up to two to the fifth minus one. And so in general, if we were to generalize this, this means that if I have n bits, I can get as high as at most two to the n minus one in base 10. So 2017, how many bits do I need? Well, I need more than five bits because that only gives me two to the fifth minus one and two to the fifth minus one is 31. So with five bits, I can get up to 31, which is just 32 minus one. With six bits, I can get up to two to the sixth power minus one, which is 63. Still not enough. We need to go up to 2017 in this case. What about two to the seventh power? minus one, well, that's 127, still not enough. Two to the eighth power? Minus one is 250, 255, still not enough. But we're getting a lot closer now. Two to the ninth power is 512, minus one is 511. Two to the 10th power, minus one, is 1027. Still not enough, but we're really close now. Two to the 11th power minus one is 2047. So with 11 bits, if I use one in all of these placeholders here, this would be the number 2047. So that means that with 11 bits, we can get rid of some of these to decrease this number down to 2017. 
Now, I don't know which ones you're going to have to figure that out on your own. I think that's a really good exercise to do. But what this means is that with 11 bits, that is sufficient enough. So we can use 11 bits, but this begs the question, can we use 10 bits? Do we need 11 bits or can we get away with doing 10 bits? Well, with 10 bits, we can only get up to the number to the 10th power minus one, which is 1023. And that won't work. That's not sufficient enough. So we need at least 11 bits, no less than 11 bits, which means that 11 bits is enough to write 2017 in base two. Let's try another one. Let's try part B. Part B is 4,000, which by the way is less than two to the 15th power minus one. Let's double check that. Yeah, this is 32,767. So this means that 15 bits would be enough, but is 14 bits enough? Because if 14 bits is enough, then we don't need 15 bits, we need 14 bits. And then if 13 bits is enough, then we don't need 14 bits, we could get away with 13. So what's the smallest number that we can bring this exponent down to so that this inequality is still true? And then that exponent will be the number of bits that we can have and get away with when representing 4,000 in base two. So let's try 14 bits. Two to the 14th minus one is 16,383. So we can get away with 14 bits. 14 bits works. So what I just discovered on my calculator is that 4,000 4, is less than two to the 14th power minus one. So 14 bits would work. What about two to the 13th power minus one? That's 8,191, that works as well. 4,000 is less than two to the 13th power minus one. So that works. What about two to the 12th power minus one? This also works. 4,000 is less than two to the 12th power minus one. That works. And then let's try two to the 11th power minus one, which is 2,047. And is that less than 4,000? No. So it looks like 12 bits is the smallest number of bits that you can use to represent 4,000 in base two. So how did I get 15 here? Why did I just guess 15? Well, I just picked a random number and overestimated the number of bits I would need. And then I brought it down. You can do the exact reverse. You can guess really low and work your way up. Either or will help you find the smallest number of bits needed to represent 4,000 in base two. Let's do part C. 4,500. Really close to 4,000, so I'm guessing the answer is going to be close to 12 bits. So let's try to the 12th power minus 1. Does this work? Well, that's 4,095. That does not work, so this is wrong. 12 bits is not enough to represent 4,500 in base two. So let's try 13 bits. Two to the 13th power minus one is 8,191. That works. And so 13 bits would be enough to represent 4,500 in base two. And last but not least, we have part D. Part D is two to the 50th power, which is, is that less than two to the 50th power minus one? No, but two to the 50th power is definitely less than or equal to two to the 51th power minus one. That does work. Now you can't really check that on the calculator, but if you take two to the 50th power, multiply it by two and then subtract one, you're gonna get a bigger number.
And so 51 bits is enough. 50 bits is not enough. And so 51 bits is the least number of bits that you need to represent 2 to the 50th power. That's kind of crazy. You would need 51 bits. That's a lot of bits. And that's a lot of calculations to do by hand. Or with even with a calculator, this would be tough. So that's why it's important to understand the patterns that you see when you solve these problems. This is a heuristic or a problem solving technique that I highly recommend. Try to figure out the patterns to solving these problems as you solve the problems. Most of the problems in these textbooks, the way they work is they start off easy and they work their way towards more difficult problems. Make sure you extract as much information from those easy problems as you can so that you can better solve those hard problems. Anyways, thanks everyone and I'll see you all in the next video.